Good morning, everyone. Thank you, John. Uh, happy Tuesday. Welcome to our 10th official session of these weekly Zoom calls. We hope that they've been helpful for you as we've been navigating this pandemic and how people with disabilities are uh, receiving services. And so today we are excited to talk about recreation. Listen, summer is here, whether we like it or not. And no matter which part of the state you are in, that probably means a little bit change of pace. And here in Phoenix, where we are right now, it's very hot. And so people are staying indoors even more. Um, and then of course, because of COVID-19, a lot of us are staying home. So how do we keep engaged and how do we stay fit? How do we stay active? We wanted to talk about this today. So we've invited some friends of ours to talk about different ways we can do this. And so we are going to hear from several experts. Um, first off, we'll hear from Maureen Mills. She is the communications coordinator at Raising Special Kids. If you aren't familiar, Raising Special Kids is the statewide network of parents and family members who care for children and young adults with disabilities. So she will be sharing some about her experience. And then we will also hear from a team from Arizona State University's Recreation Therapy Program. This is a really exciting group because we are happy to fund them. Here at the council, we've been funding a recreation grant at some local schools, and they're going to talk a little bit about that and, of course, broader tips for recreation. And then finally, we'll hear from Robert Reed. He's with the Ability360 Sports and Fitness Center here in Phoenix. It is the gym and community center and many more things for people in the Valley um, with and without disabilities. So we're really excited to get started. I'm gonna hand things over to Maureen, then we'll hear from Kelly and Rachel. Sorry, I didn't say who is with us here from ASU. Kelly Ramella and Rachel Fisher. So thank you so much for joining us today and don't be shy, ask questions in the chat. You can press star six, I believe, on the phone and um, star nine. get started. Star nine, I apologize. Star nine, if you're on the phone, we'll open things up for questions and broader discussion after we hear from our speakers. So thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Sarah, for the introduction. Glad to be here with everybody. Um, Raising Special Kids, as Sarah mentioned, is a, a statewide organization that assists parents. Uh, what many of you probably know, but if you don't, um, most of the staff members at Raising Special Kids are parents of kids with disabilities, me included. I have a 22-year-old son who has Down syndrome and autism and is very, very active. And also last summer, he was very, very sick. He ended up having to be intubated and uh, was in the ICU for over a week. And so um, this, when he was... Um, uh, discharged from the hospital, his pulmonologist said, get him a flu shot and make sure to keep him healthy. This was before COVID was even known. So once this came around, we knew and his doctor reiterated, you're stuck. You are staying home with him and with an active kid who really wants to move around. We've been trying to um, generate some uh, creative ideas on how to help him do that. We do have a giant swing set in our backyard, so that's wonderful for him. He can uh, go out there and get some sensory input that way. Um, but one thing that I noticed right away is that our neighborhood really pulled together. Everybody with kids is all in the same boat. They're all trying to help keep their kids safe and active. Um, so one of the things that we did right away was we had a neighborhood parade. We ended up having a couple of them. So we socially distanced, we had marks on, uh, all the, the, uh, six feet of, apart on the, the asphalt in the street. And we had a trombone, we had the band leader, we had everybody that got together and we came up with creative ideas. And I think one thing about raising special kids is that we have parents who are our parent leaders, who are our parent mentors, who connect with other parents. And getting ideas from them is one way to generate some ideas on how to keep safely 
active. Um, so I would encourage any parent or anybody who would like to uh, give a call to Raising Special Kids to be connected with another parent so that they can share not only ideas on what they can do in the future, or, but also um, how they're dealing with it um, themselves, either mentally or physically. So parents can talk to parents and perhaps there's a, a, a virtual play date that occurs from that. So that parent to parent connection is really a great um, thing in any kind of um, situation that parents find themselves in. Um, we also have a website. As soon as COVID hit, we decided that we needed to provide resources. We're a resource center. This is what we do. We're going to provide resources that are specific to COVID for people with disabilities. And if it's okay, I'm going to try and share my screen here so that you can see what's going on, how we've set it up here. Um, so we have all of these resources that we've put together and we're collecting and updating regularly how to explain COVID to kids with uh, disabilities, social stories, activities for kids at home, mental health resources. Um, there's resources for families of ch uh, children with special health care needs, ASL videos, education resources, basic needs. We have all of these things available and we keep updating them regularly. And we encourage people who have um, resources that they have found very helpful to send them to us so that we can help, help um, share those to the rest of the families in Arizona. Um, so that's one of the things that we're doing as far as our website goes. We also have Facebook Live series that we've been putting together so parents can get together and have different conversations and the, the different the topics are different from week to week. And uh, the Facebook Live is, is run by our wonderful Brittany Miller and she too is a parent and so she reaches out and she's great at engaging parents in finding out the things that are really working for them during this really challenging time. Um, so we, we're doing that uh, in English and in Spanish, so Facebook on Vivo. Uh, and we're also putting together a speaker series. So we have people that are coming on that are, are uh, uh, specialists in different areas. We had uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital, two doctors from Phoenix Children's Hospital come on to our speaker series to help families understand what their um, organization is doing, what their uh, facilities are doing to make sure to keep health care safe when you're um, bringing your child to um, see the doctor, etc. So uh, we're the speaker series are um, topics that are pertinent to different families. And I imagine that uh, many of the uh, other, my fellow speakers here are maybe tapped on the shoulder to see if they'd like to share it with us as well in our upcoming uh, series. Um, so I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have now or later, um, but I think maybe it's time to turn it over to um, Rachel. Is that right? Or Kelly. I'll start us off. Hello, welcome everybody. Glad to see you all this morning, uh, that you could join us in this wonderful conversation. And I always enjoy an opportunity to talk about recreation and to recreate. Uh, so my name's Kelly Ramella. I am faculty at Arizona State University. So for the past 16 years, I've been overseeing the recreational therapy program. And what this does is it prepares students to be qualified as certified therapeutic recreation specialist. We partner with organizations throughout uh, the nation actually in placements of our students and completing practicum and internships uh, so that they can gain the hands-on experience to provide uh, therapeutic and inclusive recreation. Uh, so this past year, uh, we've had uh, students placed in various places like um, the VA, Ability360, Scottsdale and Chandler Adapted Recreation, um, and also Daring Adventures. Um, and as uh, Sarah mentioned, we've been truly blessed with the opportunity to uh, conduct a two-year study uh, exploring and illuminating the importance of inclusive um, and therapeutic recreation in Arizona schools. Um, and this has been uh, quite a fascinating experience for all of us uh, as we have approached this process by partnering with Daring Adventures. Uh, they are providing uh, the recreational therapy expertise. Uh, and this uh, individual has been working in two different schools, two Title I schools uh, with fifth and sixth graders. 
and then we've been having students and we've taken interprofessional approach where we're wanting to ensure that students from different disciplines, whether it be kinesiology, exercise science, recreation therapy, um, have the training and skills uh, and ability to lead inclusive recreation. Uh, so this um, past year, um, we've learned quite a bit. Uh, we were providing services um, in the schools uh, in inclusive recreation. So out at recess, providing uh, structured activities. Uh, we were running uh, therapeutic activities within the classrooms and we also had some small group activities. And then as we all know, uh, COVID happened. So uh, one of the things that's true to a recreational therapist heart is that you've got to be flexible and adaptable and ready to change on the spot. And that's exactly um, what we did. Uh, and in doing so, we learned quickly um, how we could respond um, to provide the support that uh, we were giving in person um, virtually. So what did that look like? And some of the main things that, the five principles that we pretty much have come up with that I'm gonna have uh, Rachel explain to you in a little bit more depth. But the first and foremost, I think Maureen really touched on this, is kind of the, the importance of having that trusted adult relationship. So right away, we wanted to get the students that the kids knew, uh, as well as a the recreational therapist, um, their face in front of them as quickly as possible. And so we did that in very similar circumstances as Maureen, uh, whether it be YouTube uh, videos, um, live Facebook, um, and then uh, different ways of making sure they had that connection. The other thing is, is that we wanted to always consistently have check-ins. So check-ins is like a wellness check to making sure that how people are doing. So I think it's important to have that open, safe uh, conversation to see, because I mean, day to day, we can be changing about how we feel and, and creating that space for that conversation was important. Um, also a flexible routine. So we wanted to have things scheduled so that there's that consistency of schedule that they were used to with school that they could expect that they would get these um, at a certain time, but we would have an activity planned and you never know when we got into that situation, we may have to change that activity. So we call that flexible routine. The other part is the meaningful activity. I love how Maureen talked about the parade, right? The whole community got involved in that, the neighborhood got involved in that. That's exactly right, because that's it's everyone's voice being a part of it, contributing to it, and having that continuation, like what's next? So once that parade's done, what can we do next? So it kind of creates that energy of continuing with the rec recreation activities. Uh, and then also the peer relationships. So we were talking about parent to parent, and also we are seeing like kid to kid, like Maureen was mentioning as well, is that having, creating those spaces in that time for the kids to explore and work with each other. So we learned that this was um, really critical for these young fifth and sixth graders, particularly supporting um, like the parent and the child and providing newsletters and resources. But I wanna hand it over to Rachel because she's got, um, she's a graduate of our program. And she worked directly with a great program, actually, uh, the other side of uh, Ability360. So we, it's a nice segue <laughs> into Ability360 for <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> All right, well, good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to meet all of you. Uh, so my name is Rachel Fisher. I'm gonna do a little screen share. Um, so my name is Rachel Fisher. I am a recent graduate of the Parks and Recreation Management Recreational Therapy Program at ASU. Um, so I'm a class of 2020. I am currently uh, enrolled to start my graduate deg degree program in sustainable communities, where I'm hoping to focus on recreational therapy program in Maryville for our students in high school with disabilities and what recreational therapy looks like that, which is very exciting to me. I am also visually impaired. I'm a person with a visual impairment. So I, I do a lot of disability advocacy uh, at ASU as well as Phoenix. So, we talked about the five principles regarding doing programming for people with disabilities. Um, trust, flexible routine, meaningful activity, peer support, and check-in. I had an amazing, unique opportunity because I was in my internship at the Bridge for Independent Living on the Ability360 uh, that I was able to look at what was going to happen to the programming I was in. I had been developing programming there I had written a program the previous summer, a mind, body, soul program to get the consumers that were there involved in more leisure resources, um, leisure activities, and help them learn how to take care of themselves, mind, body, soul. All those domains were so important. 
So I decided to do my internship there and was creating new programming with them. But then COVID-19 happened and I had to figure out how I was going to still finish my internship, but more importantly, how to bring programming to these consumers where there are a wide variety of disabilities, um, wide variety of limitations, um, different socioeconomic statuses. So how do we still bring a recreation program to them when maybe they don't have computers or you know we can't, we have to social distance? So I will share how these principles helped me develop programming. So I developed two programs. Um, one was just kind of a leisure resources deep dive, uh, but we didn't start that way because we needed to build trust and we needed to connect with all the consumers. The first thing that I did in the program was I established basically like a safe space or a town hall. So we sat down with all of them on a Zoom and we had so many of them log in even the first time, more than we had in person and ask them, what are you concerned about? What are, what are your thoughts? What are you afraid of? What questions do you want us to answer? Just talk about how you feel. We just started out by creating this safe space and it's exactly what they needed. And this way we were able to hear what they wanted, how they were feeling, um, what they were scared of, be very open and honest about answering questions about COVID-19 and the situation that was happening. The safe space I think is really important because they already trust you as a program leader. So now you're giving them a space to really be open and just honest with you. So after we created a nice safe space and we got ideas for what they were interested in and how we were going to develop programming, we decided to keep a schedule much like what they had already had. So many of the consumers do have autism, so we wanted to make sure that we had a schedule that was consistent with programming that they were already a part of so that they felt more comfortable because it was something familiar. So we kept with Thursdays, but then we added Mondays because we realized that a lot of the consumers needed more socialization and that week in between programs was too much. So we added two days of programming. So we had the routine, but we had to be flexible. We learned that we had to stretch it out and add more time for them. So creating a routine, I had a routine for each day. They knew that when they came in, we had an icebreaker. We had a theme of the day. Then I would let them know what we were gonna work on for that day. They knew that there was a break time they knew that they would finish the program and activities and at the end there was time for them to have free socialization with each other. So that kept it consistent. We just allow for your programs to whatever you do uh, to be flexible enough to change. So we had multiple occasions where consumers would relate something we were talking about or an activity we were doing to how they were feeling during COVID-19. And you need to let the time be just organic and fluid. And if in that moment you need to stop and focus on how they're feeling in that conversation, then let that conversation happen. You can go back to whatever activity at a different time, but they are much more important in how they're feeling than whatever you were doing in the moment. So just make sure that your time is just organic. Let it flow. It'll, it'll work out the way it needs to. Um, meaningful activities. Uh, a lot of meaningful activities that we had were things where we could get them consistently engaged. Like I said, I did themed days. So we had motivated Mondays where we asked them, what are you motivated to do this week? What would you like to do this week? What activities are you interested in? And some of them were doing home workout routines. How can we encourage each other to do home workout, home workout routines? Uh, we had thankful Thursdays where I talked to them about an attitude of gratitude about making sure that they keep a positive perspective, even though everything outside doesn't seem positive. So making sure that that, that mind, body, soul still, making sure your mind is in a positive perspective. I would give, we did show and tell, I would give them activities to do at home and bring back in the next day. They got so excited for that because then they looked forward to the next program and they focused more on the program than all of the things that were bothering them or stressing them out. Um, peer support. Peer support to me is extremely important as a person with a disability as well. I find it really important to have peers who understand where I'm coming from. So for me, uh, this is one of our Zoom sessions. It's kind of blurry because um, I want to respect people's privacy, but our uh, consumers would stay on and talk with, the, talk with each other, share uh, phone numbers, share Facebooks, share Instagrams, because it's important for them to, it's okay to not be okay but it's not okay to stay that way. And it's not okay to do it alone. 
So making sure that if you don't feel right, you don't have a check-in coming up, that you reach out to somebody in the group and say, hey, I'm having a bad day. And they started doing that. So this last 30 minutes of every program became this amazing time where we watched them just start supporting each other and taking care of each other and asking questions and being there, which was just fantastic. Um, I'm all about peer support. And then last, the check-in. So building these programs as an intern, we had to do assessments. So for us, the assessments were another way to check in with consumers and give another voice in between those three or four days that we had a programming just so they knew that we were still thinking of them. If there were any participants that we hadn't heard of, we reached out, we checked in. Uh, so much time can happen and so many things can happen. A lot of those that we work with, like me having a visual disability, I always also have very high anxiety. So a lot of the consumers I work with have very high anxiety and anxiety can spike one day and be okay the next. So being able to check in on them, allow them to connect with you so that you can check in with them is extremely important. It builds your relationship, it builds your trust, and it just allows them to have another person that they can go to during a time of uncertainty. So that's all for my PowerPoint here. But I just want to stress that I found this, is the, although it seems like this is a really tough time, I think it's a very unique opportunity for everybody in this community that are serving people with disabilities to look to the virtual format as a way to connect us or bridge us to those in the community that may not be able to access, you know, recreation programs, social recreation programs. This is something that I think we're going to use a lot more in the future, not just during the time of COVID-19, to be able to reach those that may not be able to come to do our programs in person. So just look at this positively, have that attitude of gratitude and figure out how it is you can connect with people through your programs through a virtual platform. That's it. And who do I hand it off to next, Kelly? It's Robbie Reed, isn't it? It's Robbie Reed. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, so, uh, like uh, Rachel and Kelly said, um, I'm Robbie Reed. Um, I work for uh, the Ability360 Sports and Fitness Center. Um, so, some of you aren't aware of what Ability360 is. Um, we are actually what they call a independent living center. Um, so we have a pretty large campus if you've never been here before. Um, and um, our main office building is where our um, independent living center um, is housed at. Um, and essentially what a, um, a SIL or a Center for Independent Living Center is, is um, a, a facility that helps em empower people with disabilities to become more independent. Um, we have various services that we offer um, in regards to employment, um, as Rachel stated, uh, we have uh, peer support, independent living skills classes, and much more. Um, and uh, it's a great resource in the community. Our, our main office building also houses numerous uh, nonprofits um, that service individuals with disabilities. Um, so if you've never been here before, I would definitely encourage coming to um, see the whole uh, facility, not just the Sports and Fitness Center. Um, I'm going to talk primarily about the Sports and Fitness Center, but I wanted to give you a little, I wanted to give our organization a, a little pitch as well. Um, and if you're interested in um, some of the other services that we offer, I would encourage you to um, call our main office um, <clears throat> or go to our website. <laughs> um, and uh, so the Sports and Fitness Center. Um, so our Sports and Fitness Center um, is about to turn um, eight years old this year, I believe. Um, our birthday is Halloween. Um, and what uh, the Ability360 Sports and Fitness Center is, um, is, is a state-of-the-art facility um, built with people with disabilities in mind, but we're open to everyone. Um, so we offer a wide array of different services. Um, we're one of three of its kind in the country as far as what we offer and what we do. Um, and we offer a wide array of adaptive sports, um, adaptive fitness classes, um, <clears throat> and our facility is over 30,000 square feet. Um, we have an indoor track basketball courts, our fitness center. Um, we also have an outdoor pool um, and much, much more um, and also a rock wall. <laughs> um, but as you can imagine, um, when COVID happened, um, we obviously had to close our facility um, and our facility um, remained closed until um, about two weeks ago and we reopened our pools. Um, in the process of reopening, we decided uh, to take a little bit of a slower approach 
um, because we do service the community that we do, um, we want to make sure that we reopen um, with our staff ready and trained, um, as well as um, slowly so we can, we can make sure that we have the flow um, of what we're doing. So <clears throat> we're currently reopening in phases and we're phase one. Um, and phase one um, started with our pools um, and our pools are open for reservations only. Um, so you are able to reserve a spot um, via our, our app or also our website. Um, I'll drop this information I'm speaking about in, our, in the chat, book, chat box here um, after I'm done <clears throat> speaking. And, uh, and there, you're allowed to reserve one 45 minute uh, session um, in our lap pool or therapy pool or if you'd like to use um, uh, one as well uh, or <laughs> if you'd like to use both, I'm, I apologize. Um, you can um, schedule back-to-back -back sessions. There is a limited capacity in each pool um, each hour, so um, it depends on availability. Um, and <clears throat> we are taking extra cleaning per per precautions. That's why they're 45 minute sessions. So we have um, ample amount of time for our lifeguards to um, clean all the areas of the pool and be ready for that next session. Um, and then <clears throat> we uh, just recently announced that we're gonna be reopening our fitness center on June 15th. Um, and as you can imagine, we'll be taking a lot of precautions and things will be a little bit different for those who have been here before. Um, we'll be, we'll have specific routes, um, and, um, different procedures that will, requirements that we'll have for our members. Um, we will also only be taking reservations for our fitness center. Um, and that will be available via our app. <clears throat> um, our app, essentially you can look it up in the, or the, uh, Apple store or the Google play store. Um, if you search Ability360 um, and you can create an account or if you are a current member, you can <clears throat> um, link your, your account that you have with us. Um, and we will have a staff upstairs to help um, people as they're transitioning off machines, they'll be cleaning that equipment as well as we'll be asking people to do that um, um, as, they're, um, as they're finishing their workouts. Um, and there will be a two hour um, time limit for those, um, I see a lot of questions coming through. I promise I'll answer them when I'm done. <laughs> uh, we uh, will have a two hour time limit upstairs. Um, we'll have different sessions throughout the day um, and then we'll have hour breaks in between that so that we can take um, extra cleaning um, uh, precautions following um, each session. Um, <clears throat> so that's just a few things as far as what we're doing in our reopening process. Um, but in the midst of um, COVID and everything that has happened, um, we took this as an opportunity to really build our online content. Um, if you haven't seen already, if you follow us on, I would encourage you guys to follow us on Facebook if you are on social media. Um, that's where we keep everything the most up to date as well as post a lot of information um, and links. Uh, during that process, we did a lot of at-home workouts um, with our staff. Um, to engage with our community um, and all of those are available on our YouTube, um, our YouTube channel um, and I'll drop that in the box as well. Um, but also, as I mentioned before, we, we offer group fitness classes um, and normally those are in person in our group fitness room um, and we decided to take those online. Um, so we offer um, Zoom online fitness classes currently um, and like I said, you'll be able to look at the class schedule and see that. Um, but what's cool about it is uh, it's free to everyone. Um, normally you have to have a membership um, to take partake in our group fitness classes, but currently we're offering them all free online. Um, and that's, you know, just one of the few things that we're doing um, in the midst of all of this um, and the resources that we're offering. Um, as everyone's talked about, you know, we really had to adapt um, and come up with new ways to keep our, our members, um, you know, active as well as interact with the community. <clears throat> um, so I would encourage you you all, if you're interested um, or you're looking for that, you know, motivation as we're, we're at home more, um, definitely check out our, <clears throat> our fitness um, videos as well as uh, partake in the group fitness classes. Because when we do reopen and offer uh, group fitness classes again, um, it'll give you an idea of what it's like. Um, and we've talked a lot about we may continue to have online classes for, for quite a while. <clears throat> um, but also what's great about those is we do have um, various uh, lecture series as well. We've done some on nutrition, um, as well as uh, different training, um, you know, methods and um, ideology. So I would definitely encourage you to check those out. Um, but also, <clears throat> you know, within the, this community, uh, we have been able to partner with some, some various organizations to receive some additional funding to, um, to, to assist youth um, during this uh, transition period. 
Um, so if you have, if you're, if you're a youth yourself or you have, um, you know, whether you're a parent um, or you service individuals with disabilities um, and they're interested in um, becoming a member or <clears throat> they'd like to become more active, we're going to be doing uh, various programs ongoing um, and we're able to, we're going to be able to provide resources if, um, you know, funding um, such as, you know, purchasing a membership or things like that are, are difficult, we, we will be offering that. Uh, we will also be offering a, um, normally every summer we do a 360 camp for youth um, and we're going to actually be doing that virtually um, and it will be free. So um, we haven't posted the sign up for that quite yet, um, but um, look out for that and that's another great resource. Um, aside from that, um, we're, we're excited to, to reopen our doors, but we will be taking things, um, you know, precautionary and, and slowly and um, so if you do decide to come to the facility, you know, be ready for a few things, just like, you know, wherever you go in, in the world today, things are a little bit different than they used to be, um, but you're still able to come in and do um, your workout and, you know, be active. Um, but like I said, <clears throat> the pools are currently open and our facility, our target date to reopen is the 15th. Uh, we foresee that that will for sure happen, but we're telling everyone that's the target date. Um, and we're really excited for that. And I would really encourage you guys to, to look at our website um, and all the information that I've, I've spoken about will be on that, um, as well as um, give us a call if you have additional questions. And obviously, I'll, I'll be available after this uh, for questions. But thank you guys for listening to me ramble on here. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much. And then I'll turn it over to, um, I believe I'm turning it over to Sarah, maybe? Robbie, this is Nick. I'm going to help you out here um, and kind of read some questions from the chat that um, maybe you can answer. I'll give you a minute to catch your breath because the first question we saw was a question from Erica uh, to Rachel asking about um, the virtual peer supports and chatting that she talked about. And the question was, what kind of programming and activities do you do virtually with participants? Rachel answered in the chat, um, virtual games like Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, Trivia, virtual hikes, movies, mindfulness, stress management, mental health awareness. Um, and it goes even deeper. So we did karaoke. We even did dance classes virtually. Um, you can really adapt anything that you've done in person and find a way to do it online. The only thing I didn't find a way to adapt in time was doing an art class, but I still could have. Um, but you can really just adapt anything to doing it there. You're still looking at them. You're still virtual. Um, and anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Um, Ken jumped in the chat with, first of all, expressing how much she loves uh, Ability360 as an awesome facility. And then she also asked, is there any plans to open another Ability360 location, maybe in the East Valley? Um, currently, uh, we don't have any plans in the works. Um, uh, we obviously get that question quite a bit, um, and we would love to. Um, but right now, we don't have any plans. But obviously, the dream is hopefully to have multiple locations one day. And then, um, Robbie, there's a question from Erica, a little more details about the pool and pool reservations. What are the hours? What are the costs? Is there a limit on number of people who can come in as a reservation? Do you have any more details you could share about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I did forget to mention we did modify our hours. Um, so our current aquatic hours are um, 7 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, for this week, um, or 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. I apologize. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then um, going on to next week, um, it should go back to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and, and we're taking reservations on the hour. Um, we're limiting, limiting it to four people in our um, lap pool um, and then two people in our therapy pool. Um, aside from our aquatic classes, um, which are um, currently we have three sessions each day and that's out of four person capacity in the therapy pool. Um, and um, you're able to sign up. You do have to sign up before you come in. Um, and if you have any issues or anything with that, you can call us and we can help you with that as well. Um, but I would encourage downloading the app or go to um, the link I'm about to send here in the, sh in the chat um, with the class schedule. Um, and you're actually able to sign up um, that way online. Um, but essentially that's, uh, you know, what we're doing. And then when the facility reopens, um, we'll have adjusted hours for that. Um, as well, um, but currently uh, the pool is uh, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and then um, it should go back to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, next week. 
Um, I think, did I cover all the, the questions? Did I cover just the question if it's open to everyone and is there a cost associated? So um, we are open to everyone. Um, so sometimes, um, you know, because we were built with people with disabilities in mind, um, you do not have to have a disability to work out at the facility. Um, anyone can work out here. Um, last week, we weren't taking new memberships, um, but we are taking new memberships this week. Um, you do have to have a membership. There's uh, various options. Um, we have monthly membership options as well as a drop in. It's $5 to kind of come in at your leisure. Um, and then if um, income is an issue, so if uh, 30, our membership started out at $35 a month um, for a single um, one adult. Um, and if uh, that's an issue, we do have scholarships available. You do have to apply for a scholarship um, and it is based on income. Um, so you'll fill out the application and also um, uh, provide us with um, your last two pay stubs or um, social, social security award letter and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. There's some um, people are sharing links in the chat to your YouTube channel and saying they like their at home workouts. Uh, Sarah shared a link to some make your own Jeopardy board templates too, which I think mm -hmm. could be adapted to using virtually there. So thank you. Just as a reminder to folks on the phone, if you want to share verbally to do star nine, and if you want to share and you're on the call on your computer, you click the participants button at the bottom and then the raise hand button that pops up at the bottom of the participants list. Okay, I see a raised hand from Kathy Sweeney Daniel. I'm gonna unmute you now, Kathy. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, great information. I'm a p parent of a 37-year-old daughter who's at home with me now during this time. She's usually in her own apartment, but she's pretty medically involved, so we're laying low. Um, I have a question for Robert. Um, this sounds exciting, and, and there's a location in Tucson. I was just looking at your website, correct? Um, so, like I had mentioned before, um, we're an independent living center. Uh, but we also offer caregiving services. Um, oh. So we have multiple offices um, for our caregivers. Um, so that's actually one of our, um, our caregiver uh, locations. Um, but we um, only hold the one sports and fitness center here in Phoenix. Um, we're oh, bummer. Well, I'll go ahead and ask my question. I'm always curious about this. My daughter needs to have someone with her at all times. So she has a staff person. So what if the a person with a disability came in with um, support? Um, do they both have to pay or um, could they work out together? You know, it's kind of awkward to have a staff person standing yeah. next to her. That's been a problem at gyms here in Tucson. Um, so uh, we do allow caregivers um, to come in uh, for free um, if they're not gonna work out or take a class. Um, now we obviously, um, we sometimes will make exceptions if they're essentially kind of encouraging someone to work out. Okay. Um, but uh, we, you know, typically we do um, require caregivers to, um, to pay if they're gonna, you know, work out. Um, but if they're encouraging the, the member um, and insisting them, assisting them, then that obviously doesn't necessarily pertain to that. Um, okay. But obviously our group fitness classes are also a great um, resource um, because the caregiver can kind of sit to the side and um, you know, encourage them to go, but there's, it's in a big group. So a lot of times with our individuals, um, that's a good um, resource for them. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem, thank you for the question. And as, as we uh, start talking about um, different ideas, uh, I ask everyone to uh, participate in our poll. Um, I'm gonna launch it right now. And the poll is, have you had conversations with loved ones about how summer activities may be different than usual? So um, I'll let this poll go on for a minute and um, yeah, we'll see what, uh, how you all respond. Oh, it stopped all of a sudden. I'm gonna relaunch it, hang on. Okay.
So on the chat, um, Erica also shared a big list from Tash about a webinar for doing activities at home. There's some really cool ideas in that list. And uh, Erica also linked to the full video. So I encourage folks to go ahead and copy that over if you want to save some ideas for later. As people are filling out the poll, I wanted to ask our speakers if they had any specific activities or ideas uh, that parents and family members of younger children with disabilities can, you know, do at home uh, during the summer. Okay, so it's been a minute. I will end the poll and here are the results. So again, the question was, have you had conversations with loved ones about how summer activities may be different than usual? 53% of you said yes. 31% said yes, but we need to have more. 13% said no, but I plan to tell them. And 3% uh, said no, and I don't plan to tell them. Thank you all for participating. So, uh, Kelly and Rachel, do you want to um, maybe take uh, Sarah's uh, question on? Uh, I think you guys might be a little bit more uh, in that realm of answering that well. So, uh, what we found is that a lot of the ideas that you're seeing here with the sensory projects, the Zen garden, planting, arts, um, games, you know, really having the variety is what we're seeing. Um, I think there's you know, real concern for the social emotional health of kids. So creating those spaces, those social networking spaces where they can get together is probably the most critical um, that we're seeing. And I think Maureen mentioned that as well, is that um, you want to facilitate kids getting together um, and doing something fun and meaningful together and um, actually encouraging their own ideas of what they Maybe um, they're using different platforms. TikTok's been really popular and it's actually a good platform to use. Um, so um, we've been encouraging that um, with monitoring, of course, uh, I think has been um, important and using any of those platforms is to make sure you've got that um, a supervision over anything that you use when you get into those spaces. Mm -hmm. Also, I did want to mention that some of the uh, resources that we have listed on our website are for younger kids, for early childhood uh, resources. So um, certainly we have a lot of parents who are looking for those types of things, and we are collecting all of that type of thing and uh, uh, those types of activities and putting them on our website to make them available for folks. Absolutely. I, for me, I just want to say get outside. You can take any of those activities that you do indoors and take them outside. They need that vitamin D, they need the different atmosphere, and it'll just change in how they engage in that activity. I shared a link, it's a Pinterest board that has 122 sensory activities. Those are so fun and you can do them and get messy outside. Awesome, thank you guys. Those are, those are good tips. I'm sorry, uh, did you say something? I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> I was just thanking everybody for their ideas uh, for the younger kids. I love the TikTok one. I mean, I know TikTok dances are super popular and during this pandemic, so many parents are getting involved in doing them with their kids, which is awesome. Sarah, have you done one? Because <laughs> if so, I want to see it. <laughs> I've done one, but I've kept it in private. I'm not here that. <laughs> yeah, maybe not publicly. Uh, I haven't done one publicly, but I definitely tried a few. Definitely. And um, not quality at all, but super fun. <laughs> So I also wanted to share another opportunity. I don't know how many people on the call 
are familiar with the Arizona Youth Leadership Forum. This is a, yeah. I'm not gonna use the word summer camp. It's like a leadership training for young adults in Arizona with disabilities hosted each summer by Melissa Ann Santora and the Statewide Independent Living Center, Living Council. And this year it has gone virtual. And the great part about this is, yes, it's an activity to stay engaged. Yes, it's an educational forum, but it's super fun and it teaches youth leadership skills, uh, including how to secure a job. There are mock interviews, resume building activities, uh, voting activities. Every year the youth actually vote for a leader and they have to give speeches and, and pitch to their peers why the group should vote for them. It is really amazing. I've attended myself when they hold them in person. Usually they're taking place at college campuses. So people have an opportunity to get that experience, you know, stay for a few days in dormitories with peers. Sometimes it's the first time these young adults, these, these teenagers get that opportunity to be away from home. So of course this year it's different. It's gonna be a different feel, but I have a lot of confidence in Melissa and her team, as well as the alumni group of former youth who've attended. They are very involved in creating activities so it's extremely peer led. I, I, it's an amazing model here in the state. So I'm gonna put in the chat box a link where people can learn more about what is planned for this summer statewide. I wanna say the age group, I don't wanna misstate it. I, I wanna say it starts at 14. So really it's, yeah, thank you, Jeff. It's in the chat, Arizona Virtual Youth Leadership Forum. And Highly, highly recommend it for the uh, teenage and um, college age youth that you may have in your life who may be interested in that. So we have a question in the chat that I think is geared towards our, our participants too for people to share in the chat or raise their hand if they wanna share verbally. Some, <clears throat> what you're doing to keep engaged and active right now are some of the things that we've been talking about and you've been hearing from the speakers. Have you been doing these things? Have they been working for you? Do you have other ideas? Please share in the chat. All right, Kathy, I'm gonna unmute you now. I see your hand up. Nope, hold on. All right, sorry about that, Kathy, you're good now. Okay, a fun activity we've been doing with my daughter was we found a second, we bought a secondhand Wii machine. So she used to go bowling on Fridays and now that's our bowling day here at our house. Um, and we got the um, fit bit part or whatever with the Wii and, um, and she's enjoying that just for something different to do. And it's pretty exciting. Um, we moved uh, our treadmill and exercise bicycle into a, the middle of our family room. And she loves the Disney Channel and her doctors are thrilled because she's lost almost 15 pounds since she's been with us. And um, so, the, and the doctors are thrilled and it's pretty much those, you know, um, e eating a healthy diet, but also um, when she wants to watch Disney, she hops on a machine. And then with the Wii, um, I know it's kind of older, um, the one we have, and it was missing some parts and we had to order and stuff, but it's been, um, it's been fun for our family. And indoor, she can't be out in the heat for long periods of time. So yeah, we keep searching and searching for stuff to do. Thanks so much for sharing, Kathy. You're welcome. That's awesome. I also think, uh, you know, I think sometimes it's easy to uh, look at some of the, you know, the struggles or, you know, obstacles um, with everything that we're facing right now in this world. But I think there's also some light at the end of the tunnel because of all of this. There's a lot more online resources, a lot more virtual classes and things that you can participate in. 
Um, obviously we do offer that, but I've also seen for myself, um, you know, it, it, I coach our youth wheelchair basketball team and it's been um, great to be able to kind of give them resources uh, because I think with youth, uh, it might be easier to put them in front of a computer screen. Um, they might see it, see it as a little bit more fun, um, but also it's, you know, instant um, versus, you know, signing up and then going somewhere. Um, so I definitely think, you know, engaging online can be a positive thing and there are a lot more options now. Um, and I think that that's gonna, I think it's gonna stay that way. Um, so I think that that's encouraging and exciting, um, especially, um, you know, with various individuals and in our population and, um, you know, just in general, so. So there's a question um, from Liz to Kelly and Rachel. Um, Liz writes, when I was going to school for Parks and Recs to get my CTRS, I had a list of games that were identified to work with specific skills or outcomes. Do you have something like that that you could share with the group? So I can't think of something comprehensive that I could easily add a link to because it looks like that. <laughs> These are Rachel's the holding up binders. Books. <laughs> yeah. So the list is a little long now. So. <laughs> Um, let me see what I can do to find some of that, something that would be more accessible, like that it would be usable. But um, yeah, I'll, let me look into that. That's a good question. Yeah, a lot of the activities that I, that I did, although they seem random, like, you know, virtual escape room or virtual hike, they were all purposeful to whatever we were talking about. So I can, me and Kelly can put something together for you and link them to why we chose them and what the outcome was supposed to be in regards to like their goals. Absolutely. So what we look at from a recreation therapy perspective is that there's those activities that really support like those functional goals, whether they're physical, cognitive, social, um, emotional. Um, and then there's this piece of leisure education where you're really trying to help raise awareness of the importance of leisure um, and the resources and access to leisure and the independence with that and then um, access to, you know, independent recreation. So how, you know, leisure education, for example, would be an, uh, how do we get access to Ability360 so that I can go and work out independently or swim independently. So it's that full spectrum of services. So, you know, I think we can find something, Rachel. If not, Rachel will help me put it together for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And like how I listed Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy and Trivia, I used those as a way to reinforce the concepts that we were talking about. So it became this really fun game, a meaningful activity. But what it was, was repetition in a fun way for them to recall what they had learned. So it wasn't just a random game of Jeopardy. It was leisure education Jeopardy. <laughs> Yeah, so for me on a personal level, my father's been very um, ill with uh, something going on with his neck where he's lost function of the right side of his body. And, you know, as a rec therapy daughter, I've been sending him like, you know, complex Lego uh, Legos um, to help him with his fine motor function. And the medication he's been taking has been impacting him cognitively. So it keeps his mind going with like puzzles and Legos. So it's really kind of matching that activity to what you're really trying to enhance. So uh, Liz, thank you for the question. Yeah, and personally for me, like how I'm engaging, um, I'm creating meaningful activities with my family since we're all home. Since between working at home and my daughter uh, being in school at home, my daughter also has um, a learning disability and attention deficit. So finding ways to help her since she can't get out the house. We were lucky that she was gifted a electric drum set and I couldn't ask for a better thing for a girl that's got attention deficit because it's been helping her so much to focus and be active. And it's just been amazing. But as a family whole, like we plan road trips to go hike someplace we've never been, or we uh, do brunch every Sunday now where there's an activity, we all put, pitch in with breakfast and then we do something after. So just finding ways to get everyone in my house engaged, not just myself. <laughs> Yeah, I think like when earlier when folks were talking about, you know, having a routine and having a flexible routine, I think that resonated with some of the people in the chat and it did with me personally too, just because 
for me, activity and, and having a routine and a space to fit it in is so important. And routine is exactly what got thrown off for me in this, with COVID, everything kind of changed. So settling into a new routine and figuring out how to fit activity into that, I think has been really helpful for me to have a little bit of that structure. So I really appreciated thinking about routine and, and flexible routine that resonated with me personally. So thank you. I know my son has been uh, very active in, he does his day program um, through uh, Zoom. So he does a lot of Zoom things, but he also does a lot of the activities that have been shown here. He's been doing cooking and he's been doing art programs. He does a Zumba class. Uh, and I think he's probably gonna try and get back to his acting class, his virtual acting class. So I think he really uh, responds to the Zoom uh, platform because it makes them, him feel like the star of the show all the time. So luckily for us, that's really beneficial for him. Uh, but he also likes to be out and be physically active. So um, those are the rewards that we attach to the things that he's working towards. So the number of times that he can ride the hit his bicycle down the big hill depends upon how he responds to the activities that he's doing and the re responsibilities that he has. So we're really trying to help him connect his uh, rewards to the, the way that he's responding to his daily activities. All right, I see Kathy with her hand up again. I'm gonna unmute you now. You can talk. Um, something really fun we did um, this past week and it was my husband's and I, our fifth wedding anniversary and we were looking for something wild and crazy to do and um, with, our, with my daughter. And I bet every town has this, but we found a map of all the murals painted around Tucson. And we spent the day, and it was so much fun. Um, we didn't find, we found half of them. Um, and then we each picked our favorite. And you, you really have to look, but we saw some beautiful murals we had never seen before in Tucson. We have a ton here. And um, my daughter really enjoyed it. And just getting out of the house and, um, you know, staying out of the heat in the car, it was, it was a, uh, it was a fun activity. So other families might um, look around um, in your town to see if there's something similar, a map that kind of takes you on an outdoor scavenger hunt. It was a blast. Thank you, Kathy. Sarah says, what a cool idea in the chat. Um, and Jeff, and I'll add on to his comment, says congratulations on your wedding anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've also done uh, urban adventure quests. You can go online and um, they send you around and they have uh, almost like problem solving uh, clues and you have to go and find your different places. So you can look those types of things up so that you can get out and do different things. And like Kathy said, really learn about things that you may walk by every single day and never realize that they're there or, and or really see the the things for what they are so i just want to if people want to save the chat um if you go to the bottom and there's a dot 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 button and you click it and then one of the options is going to be save the chat that can be a great way Although I know um, Sarah and ADBPC works really hard to update their um, Google Doc with all this information, this can be a great way to just save all the links in one place in case you want to check out some of these great resources that are being shared later on when you have a little more time. Saving the chat is one way to keep these resources at hand that we're sharing with the online links. We're also going to share those on our shared Google Doc. Now you'll receive a link to the recording of today's session where, that you can watch, rewatch, share, and that email will also include, as we do each week, 
a link to the shared Google Doc where you will find all of these, um, you know, websites and ideas from people because we want to make sure that people who weren't able to attend today will still have access. So thank you. Keep sharing what you're doing because it may help a family that's not able to make it today. So there's a question in the chat about resources specifically in Spanish. And I know that um, Maureen talked about that a bit with RSK. So I don't know, do you want to take that question a little bit? Yes, we, we do try to, whatever we find in English, we always try to search and find in Spanish as well. Uh, that's not always the case that we can do that, but we do have Spanish speaking staff who are collecting resources and they're, we're putting them on our Spanish website as well. So we are working really hard to provide the same types of resources to our Spanish speaking families as we are to our English speaking Spanish or families. So um, yes, that is something that we do. And we also are doing the, the Facebook um, Vivo um, in Spanish and we're just launching a uh, Spanish uh, Facebook page. So uh, head on over there and we'll, right now we're just at the beginning stages, we're starting to put some things up there, but we really hope to generate some interaction with our families, uh, Spanish speaking families um, and providing that uh, robust interaction opportunity for them there. Yeah, the chat's lit up a little with more links to resources. Uh, Jerry shared an idea to do a virtual hike on the Arizona State Park Trail with Google Maps. Yes. There are a lot of virtual field trips that are available as well. I know my son has gone to uh, national parks and also went to New York City virtually and where his older brother and sister live. So that was kind of cool for him to be able to see that. Uh, those are really, really interesting things. And I uh, highly encourage people to check those out. I absolutely agree. All the museums, all the zoos all have a virtual tour now and they're just fantastic. I wanted to update everybody uh, for a moment about something I meant to share at the beginning of the call, so I apologize. This was actually a follow-up to our meeting last week. Now, if you remember, we did a lot of polling to the audience last week, thanks to Jeff for that. We were sharing results from a survey that you all helped us with, offering feedback on what you need as community members, people with disabilities, caregivers, from the state, from community organizations, as we move forward through navigating the pandemic and the aftermath. So you all were very open with us and we appreciate that. We compiled all of the feedback into a letter as well as uh, the slides we shared via PowerPoint. And we sent that letter yesterday to DES, to DDD, to ACCESS, to the governor's office and to the Department of Health Services. And we've already gotten responses back from several of the agencies requesting the full report, the full report of the survey. Now that survey was anonymous, but that just communicates to us there is interest from state leaders in hearing what's going on on the ground and how they can better serve everybody. So we advocated for more communication. We advocated for um, more opportunities for people who may or may not use American Sign Language to communicate or Spanish uh, or other languages so that they're getting the right information and resources. And so if you're interested in accessing the PowerPoint slides with the charts illustrating the feedback, we do now have that on the shared Google Doc that Jeff just shared the link to. Thank you, Jeff. We also have that letter. If you want to see that letter, um, we've uploaded it 
uploaded that as well. And I'll just link that in the chat. Um, and really we couldn't have written this without this group. So I wanted to make sure to take the time and thank you all and to encourage you to keep sharing your experience as we move through this. New challenges may pop up and that we now have a link to share that with the leaders who could actually make a change. So thank you so much and uh, let us know if you have any questions about that. I believe Jerry with the Disability Resource uh, Committee uh, also commit, uh, completed a survey uh, recently and uh, developed some results. Uh, Jerry, if you're still on, do you want to share the outcome of that? I would love to share it. I think the, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, Jerry. I would love to share it. I think the best thing to do is for me to uh, send a link because it's uh, it has a great overview of the actual survey, but then it actually has all the responses uh, from everybody. But we had 18 people from the DRC, you know, submit uh, what they're all going through, you know, due to COVID-19 on when they anticipate opening back up, how they, you know, anticipate opening up, what are their issues and so forth. So really it's a pulse of um, how we can all work together uh, to really you know provide these services that are so vital to the people that we serve so i will figure out how to post it so everybody can access it but thanks for bringing that up kelly okay. Looks like we have a hand raised from Erica. Erica, if you're on the phone, you can do star nine. I think we've got her unmuted. Oh, okay. Hey guys, can you hear me? Hey, I just wanted to thank you all uh, for presenting today and for all the great ideas. I can tell you that I am not a parent of a child with a disability, but um, I can only imagine how hard it is for families who have children with and without disabilities um, over the summer. Um, we've, we've even heard that people are struggling um, trying to figure out what to do, especially when it gets so hot out. And so these are some great ideas. I did want to say the Disney World idea, and, and this is actually you know, for children with and without disabilities, and a good workout for you guys. Uh, we put it on, you know, the YouTube has all these rides, the roller coaster rides. So I put my seven year old on a chair and we shook it and turned it side to side, put it right in front of the TV. And she actually felt like she was on the ride. The unfortunate thing though about that is that, that she wanted to do it over and over again. And after a while your triceps and your biceps start like just burning. But it's really about creativity as you guys all know. And we've also started to call everything camps. So like she wanted to do modeling I don't know why, but she wanted to do modeling and play with makeup. So we said that part of that for your runway, she had to clean her room so that it makes a great photo shoot. And so this morning her room was totally clean. So I think us as parents, it's like trying to get our kids with and without disabilities, all these activities and thinking out of the box and raising special kids. I'm so glad you're there uh, because maybe able to join forces on what to do to get through this long summer. I mean, we were already at stay at home for what, three months now? Mm -hmm. And school doesn't start till for some of us till August. So it's it's a little it's gonna be an interesting summer. But I appreciate all these ideas and I'm glad to hear 
and that we have resources to be able to connect for, for all of us kids with and without disabilities. And we, and I, we will be going to Ability360 to check the pool. <laughs> awesome, definitely come check it out. Yeah. Okay, Marianne has such an awesome idea. It, she says that we are doing it with our respite group and they're going to a hotel. We'll be doing the rides in front of the resort, making Disney Dole Whip and Mickey Mouse ears, Disney crafts, and our own Disney shirts. That sounds like a blast. Mm -hmm. Mary uh, from Raising Arizona Kids Magazine uh, in the chat also links to their new issue. Um, or their website rather, and their July issue is going to drop digitally this week. They have lots of really great resources on their website. If you aren't familiar, Raising Arizona Kids Magazine does an annual extravaganza, if you will, all focused on summer camps, including summer camps for kids and young adults with disabilities. So they are kind of the go-to typically for summer camp activities, and I know a lot of camps are moving online so make sure to check that out if that's something you're interested in because they have a very deep well of knowledge when it comes to local options for camp so thanks for sharing mary and marianne and i know natalie had some information to share about what's next for our collective what's next for addn are you there natalie i am um, hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Natalie Luna Rose uh, with the Arizona Center for Disability Law, uh, Communications and Outreach Manager. Um, so um, ACDL is, um, we're a nonprofit law firm, but we're also a civil rights organization. And, um, and, I, and I know we talked about, we, great discuss uh, before I get into that, great discussion today. Thank you for all the ideas and and things that people can do. Um, it's it's uh, like Erica. I don't have a I, I have a child, but um, I don't have a child with disability. So trying to figure out something for hers is been difficult. Um, and um, and those uh, parents that have children with disabilities, so that's it's a little bit more. So I really appreciate all the information and all the great. Uh, uh, messages and, and suggestions in our chat box. We'll definitely add it to our FAQ. Um, but as I was saying, uh, ACDL, we're a nonprofit law firm, but we're also a civil rights uh, organization. And um, with the recent uh, goings on right now, we, uh, we sent out uh, a statement on, on uh, the uh, incident with um, Mr. Floyd and, um, and we also, you know, just want to uh, put out there that if for any reason, whether it's, um, and with the curfew from Governor Ducey, if you or uh, your family member feel that you uh, rights have been violated due to um, the curfew or to COVID-19, you're not receiving services or just not receiving services in general, um, please, please contact us. Um, We've been open and very busy throughout this whole um, three months. And um, uh, since the um, uh, uh, incident with Mr. Floyd, we've seen a little bit more calls um, into our office. So, um, and we were already busy, but we, we always want to keep that line of communication open. Um, you know, and, and as a collective, we're committed to fighting for the rights and safety and justice for everyone. Um, and, you know, and ECDL is available to listen to the concerns that you may have. Um, so even if we can't help you, we can definitely try to uh, direct you in the, in the right way. Um, so uh, with that, we've got, um, it looks like it's 1120. Um, so next week's topic, um, because there's probably so, and we had a call on 
the ADDN, uh, we meet uh, before each call every week to to go over, uh, you know, items and things, you know, and um, our discussion yesterday is that, you know, everybody probably seems a little burned out with not just being at home with COVID, but now with all the social unrest. Um, so uh, next week's topic will be about behavioral and mental health and ways to cope. Um, we're still working on speakers, um, but we hope to have some really good resources. So if you have any, any ideas or anything you'd like to, to either share right now, we've got a few minutes, or want to see in next week's session, please also let us know in the chat or you can email um, Sarah and I and I will put my email in the chat right now. Um, so I don't know if anybody has anything to say about any of that. We've oh. collected some uh, uh, mental health resources for families and for young children and for children in general on our website. So I encourage people to go ahead and take a look there. Um, virtual uh, meditation apps, those types of things are some of the, the uh, um, the resources that are available. I'm, sh I'm sharing a resource from Mental Health America. I did a mental health awareness with our social recreation population. And uh, the tools that they give you through Mental Health America, since May was Mental Health Awareness Month, was really phenomenal and allowing a safe space to remove stigma and talk to them about mental health was fantastic. So I shared that. Great, thank you so much. That's, that's really helpful. Um, okay, does anybody else have any other further questions or anything they'd like to say before we wrap up? Okay, uh, well, not hearing any. Uh, I want to thank everybody, uh, Kelly, Rachel, Robert, Maureen, thank you so much for uh, being a part of us today and giving us some great suggestions and ideas and being positive. Um, I have not yet um, checked out the Village 360 gym. I, I see it all the time when I go to the office. So one of these days, Robert, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll walk in there. Um, so um, with that, if there's no more questions, um, I hope everybody has a, oh, do we have, oh, hold on, that's a question. Does ACDL have Spanish speaking representatives? We do. Um, and, and I do believe Jeff gave us the um, we have a 1-800 number, and of course, I don't have it off the top of my head, um, but hold on, I'm going to put it here. You can call our 800 number, um, and definitely, uh, we've got several Spanish-speaking representatives that will be able to help. So, um, okay, well, I want to again thank everybody, and I hope everybody has a safe week, and try to stay cool, except for those in Flagstaff. I'm jealous of you. So, um, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.